Welcome back to Offender's Guide. This is NCLEX Parent Review Lesson 11. We're going to be doing respiratory medication, med search, and nursing fundamental questions. All right, without the way, let's get started. Question 1. Isoni as it is prescribed for a two-year-old child with a positive tuberculin skin test. The mother of the child asks the nurse how long the child will need to take the medication. Which time frame is the appropriate response to the mother? A. 6 months B. 9 months C. 15 months D. 18 months The correct answer is B. 9 months. Rationale, isoniazid is given to prevent tuberculosis infection from progressing to active disease. A chest x-ray film is obtained before the initiation of preventive therapy. In infants and children, the recommended duration of isoniazid therapy is 9 months. For children with human immunodeficiency virus infection, a minimum of 12 months is recommended. Question 2. Rifabutin is prescribed for a client with active mycobacterium avium complex disease and tuberculosis. The nurse should monitor for which side slash adverse effects of the medication. Select all that apply. A. Signs of hepatitis. B. Flu-like syndrome. C. Low neutrophil count. D. Vitamin B6 deficiency. E. Ocular pain or blurred vision. F. Tingling and numbness of the fingers. The correct answers are A. Signs of hepatitis, B. Flu-like syndrome, C. Low neutrophil count, and E. Ocular pain or blurred vision. Rationale, rifabutin may be prescribed for a client with active MAC disease and tuberculosis. It inhibits mycobacterial DNA-dependent RNA polymerase and suppresses protein synthesis. Side effects include rash, gastrointestinal disturbances, neutropenia, red-orange body secretions, uveitis, myositis, arthralgia, hepatitis, chest pain with dyspnea, and flu-like syndrome. Vitamin B6 deficiency and numbness and tingling in the extremities are associated with the use of isoniazid. Ethambutol also causes peripheral neuritis. Question 3. An antihypertensive medication has been prescribed for a client with hypertension. The client tells the nurse that she would like to take an herbal substance to help lower her blood pressure. Which statement by the nurse is the most important to provide to the client? A. Herbal substances are not safe and should never be used. B. I will teach you how to take your blood pressure so that it can be monitored closely. C. You will need to talk to your health care provider before using an herbal substance. D. If you take an herbal substance, you will need to have your blood pressure checked frequently. The correct answer is C. You will need to talk to your health care provider before using an herbal substance. Rationale Although herbal substances may have some beneficial effects, not all herbs are safe to use. Clients who are being treated with conventional medication therapy should be advised to avoid herbal substances with similar pharmacological effects because the combination may lead to an excessive reaction or unknown interaction effects. Therefore, the nurse would advise the client to discuss the use of the herbal substance with the health care provider. Question 4. A client has a prescription to take guaifenesin every four hours as needed. The nurse determines that the client understands the most effective use of this medication if the client makes which statement? A. I will watch for irritability as a side effect. B. I will take the tablet with a full glass of water. C. I will take an extra dose if the cough is accompanied by fever. D. I will crush the sustained release tablet if immediate relief is needed. The correct answer is B. I will take the tablet with a full glass of water. Rationale, guaifenesin is an expectorant. It should be taken with a full glass of water to decrease viscosity of secretions. Sustained release preparations should not be broken open, crushed, or chewed. The medication may occasionally cause dizziness, headache, or drowsiness as side effects. The client should contact the healthcare provider if the cough lasts longer than one week 
or is accompanied by fever, rash, sore throat, or persistent headache. Question 5. A postoperative client has received a dose of naloxone hydrochloride for respiratory depression shortly after transfer to the nursing unit from the post-anesthesia care unit. After administration of the medication, the nurse should check the client for which sign slash symptom. A. Pupillary changes. B. Scattered lung wheezes. C. Sudden increase in pain. D. Sudden episodes of diarrhea. The correct answer is C. Sudden increase in pain. Rationale, naloxone hydrochloride is an antidote to opioids and may also be given to the postoperative client to treat respiratory depression. When given to the postoperative client for respiratory depression, it may also reverse the effects of analgesics. Therefore, the nurse must check the client for a sudden increase in the level of pain experienced. Options A, B, and D are not associated with this medication. Question 6. The nurse reviews a client's electrolyte results and notes a potassium level of 5.5 milliequivalents per liter. The nurse understands that a potassium value at this level should be noted with which condition? A. Diarrhea B. Traumatic burn C. Cushing syndrome D. Overuse of laxatives The correct answer is B. Traumatic burn Rationale A serum potassium level that exceeds 5.0 milliequivalents per liter is indicative of hyperkalemia. Clients who experience the cellular shifting of potassium, as in the early stages of massive cell destruction, are at risk for hyperkalemia. The client with Cushing syndrome, or diarrhea, and the client who has been overusing laxatives, are at risk for hypokalemia. Question 7. The nurse reviews a client's electrolyte results and notes that the potassium level is 5.4 milliequivalents per liter. Which of the following should the nurse observe on the cardiac monitor as a result of this laboratory value? A. ST elevation. B. Peaked P waves. C. Prominent U waves. D. Narrow peaked T waves. The correct answer is D. Narrow peaked T waves. Rationale A serum potassium level of 5.4 milliequivalents per liter is indicative of hyperkalemia. Cardiac changes include a wide, flat P wave, a prolonged PR interval, a widened QRS complex, and narrow, peaked T waves. Question 8. A client has been taking isoniazid for two months. The client complains to the nurse about numbness, paresthesias, and tingling in the extremities. The nurse interprets that the client is experiencing which problem? A. Hypercalcemia B. Peripheral neuritis C. Small blood vessel spasm D. Impaired peripheral circulation The correct answer is B. Peripheral neuritis Rationale A common adverse effect of isoniazid is peripheral neuritis. This is manifested by numbness, tingling, and paresthesias in the extremities. This adverse effect can be minimized by pyridoxine intake. Options A, C, and D are incorrect. Question 9. The nurse is reviewing the health records of assigned clients. The nurse should plan care knowing that which client is at risk for a potassium deficit. A. The client with Addison's disease. B. The client with metabolic acidosis. C. The client with intestinal obstruction. D. The client receiving nasogastric suction. The correct answer is D. The client receiving nasogastric suction. Rationale Potassium rich gastrointestinal fluids are lost through GI suction, which places the client at risk for hypokalemia. The client with intestinal obstruction, Addison's disease, and metabolic acidosis is at risk for hyperkalemia. Question 10. The nurse who is caring for a client with kidney failure notes that the client is dyspneic and crackles are heard on auscultation of the lungs. Which additional signs slash symptoms should the nurse expect to note in this client? 
A. Rapid weight loss. B. Flat hand and neck veins. C. Weak and thready pulse. D. Increase in blood pressure. The correct answer is D. An increase in blood pressure. Rationale Impaired cardiac or kidney function can result in fluid volume excess. Findings associated with fluid volume excess include cough, dyspnea, crackles, tachypnea, tachycardia, an elevated blood pressure, a bounding pulse, an elevated central venous pressure, weight gain, edema, neck and hand vein distension, an altered level of consciousness, and a decreased hematocrit level. That's all I have for this video. You can follow me on Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok for any updates. Links will be in the description. I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching.